Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? And wait till you see the backside of this thing. And I'm sorry if I seem like a little bit over the top, like I see the same thing all day every day and when I see someone actually think outside of the box and do something different, I just lose my mind and I get really excited about it. My name is Josh, the RV Nerd, by the way. Welcome to our Coldwater, Michigan Superstore. This is the 36FL Wildwood Heritage Glen Elite, which is the highest member of the Wildwood family. And I am, I, I tell you what, this is my first time actually physically going through this trailer and I am pumped about what I see here. They took a good concept, just a front living fifth wheel, and they kind of reimagined it in a way I didn't see coming. Um, there's going to be some things some people like, some people definitely dislike. I don't think this is going to be the one for everybody, but it reminds me a lot of my personal favorite full-time and fifth wheel, the 382 front living North Point, the Flurb. Um, the bathroom layout is very similar. Uh, there's a couple things on this one that I think some people won't like, and that is the good information I want to give you as we go. Like, I'll mention that the, the entry door doesn't have a window. I'm not really enthused by that, but at the same time, it's got enough windows everywhere else. I can kind of overlook that. That's just a thing Wildwood tends to do. The kitchen, I like, but I think that might be a bit of a break point for some folks. Um, the bedroom has some very interesting qualities, and they actually built a fifth wheel with a bed in the slide that is CPAP friendly. Why is that so rare and so hard for so many manufacturers? Heritage Glen nailed it over here. But when we come outside, the thing that had me flipping my lid at the beginning of the video, the, the, the whole patio situation on this thing is next level, buddy. Uh, the, the outside kitchen is amazing. And wait till you see the docking station and the wet bay hookups and how I feel it is just heads and tails above what almost anyone else seems to be doing in fifth wheels most of the time. This thing is cool. I'm pumped about it. I would really like your feedback though, in case, you know, it's early and I'm just and having a squirrel moment here, but I think this thing's a business. Now, starting right here by the door, uh, we'll come back to the kitchen. What I wanna do here is just kind of give you like a nice establishing look. Like when you walk out of the bedroom, which is what I'm doing, or when you walk in the front door, this is your view right here. And uh, I love that it has, one of the nice things about a bigger rig like this, like we have a defined living room. We have a defined separated kitchen. They're not all on top of one another. That does mean sometimes it's a little tricky for me recording because, you know, the open areas are kind of frankly very conducive and friendly to uh, recording. That vaulted ceiling up there really helps open things up and... Notice how above the slides you've got those nice accent lights and they're just a white accent, not the neon blue accents that I know a lot of people do not generally enjoy. Before we get upstairs though, I want to actually get to the bottom of things, meaning uh, the floor, <laughs> and talk about how there's no floor heating vents in this RV. Normally cabinet ducted heating means you're going to lose some storage, but this thing is so large you can compensate for that by basically just moving the cabinet somewhere else. They don't have to fight for space. Also, whether it's these steps to the living room or the steps up to the bedroom, these cool little sort of pseudo floating steps, they have that kind of look about them. Obviously, they have brackets under them. I like those because it makes the rig look and feel a little bit more open and airy. But at the same time, uh, you can slide shoes and stuff down there. Now, for the most part, you'll notice this RV, this layout specifically, not most Heritage Glens, but this one is effectively carpetless flooring. Now I say that as we're staring at a hump of carpet. I'm not ignorant to what just happened right here. That I don't really think is a generally walkable space. Where you are going to be walking, it has uh, effectively carpetless uh, walkable space and no heating vents. So uh, I think it qualifies. We can get semantical, but I think it, it qualifies nicely. Windows all around here. And I'm actually really excited to get you up closer to that entertainment center in just a minute. But as long as we're kind of scanning around, looking around right here, of course, when you have the dual opposing sofas, you gain the benefit of those dual opposing height of bits. And I like how there's still room to kind of walk through the middle of it. Um, there are some models where the two height beds kind of kiss one another right in the middle. And that doesn't bother me because then it's one giant mega bed where you can sleep like all of the grandkids in one single trip, which is also kind of cool. So we carry different things with different benefits. And that's why I go through these videos here. We got that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster right down below. You saw how that floating ottoman, which a lot of brands don't do up in a front living room anymore. 
that's just a nice place where even if you're not sitting at the theater seat, you still have a spot to kick your feet up, keep a couple little board games or dog toys or something in there. Actually, that is, a, this is, I'm thinking about this. This is a good dog camper. Carpetless, ventless one. This is a good dog camper. <laughs> oh, I hadn't really kind of considered that before, which is funny because I don't leave my house without scratching my dog's ears in the morning. The entertainment center here, you saw the TV. It's a power up down. But what I wanted to show you, and you also, I'm sure, saw the, the privacy shade. Look at the depth of this cavity up in the nose cap right here. And I think that's very cool. Because if you want to just leave it wide open and have that cool front viewing sort of situation, you can. Or if you want to do something like uh, dress it up a little bit, maybe put uh, some kind of plant or something or decoration up there. Or if you're like, you're like, man, we go camp. I love anybody decorate their RV for Halloween, for Christmas. Leave me a note. And if you don't mind. Jump over to our Facebook page and like share a picture of your RV all decorated for the holidays. I love stuff like that. I wish I had more of an opportunity to do things like that. And I am so envious of people who take the, uh, you know, who make the time, I will say, to, uh, you know, do those kind of, you know, seasonal family kind of fun things right there. Now, um, again, all of the windows around these things, they all open up. They've all got pull down privacy shades and they're all blackout roller shades let me actually give you a little look at that with my little michigan mittens here there you go and because some people don't like the boxy look around the windows but one of the nice things about it is it does like totally blot out the sun if you want to straight black the sun out of this thing you absolutely can now one thing here this is an eight foot wide rv and because they had to leave room for a decent sized stairwell they did have to go with a little bit more of a compressed theater seat, like a love seat kind of situation. So, uh, like myself and my wife, we'd have plenty of room here. But I have a lot of people leave a lot of comments on these channels. And there's a lot of folks that look, I'm a fuller figured person. My wife, my myself, or whoever, you know, we're going to be rubbing thighs all the time. That kind of drives me crazy. Maybe this isn't necessarily the right one for you. Or maybe that's where you leverage this handy little uh, floating ottoman over here. So that, you know, you can each kind of kick your feet up in your own way and have your own personal space. Or there's also people who really enjoy, you know, the uh, the cuddle connection, as it were. That should... <laughs> it sounds like the, uh, the Disney version of the love connection with Chuck Woolery. Welcome to the cuddle connection. We'll be back in two and two. <laughs> Did you guys know? And, and I'm sorry, I'm about to go way off on a tangent here. Did you know the reason he said we'll be back in two and two? is because the commercials for the Love Connection lasted exactly two minutes and two seconds. I timed it once. And I was like, why is he saying that? And I'm like, wait, no way. And yeah, turns out that was uh, <coughs> exactly what he was doing. Anyway, one thing I want to mention here, I'm going to take a bit of a knee. If you look up, it looks a little dark in this ceiling cavity area, but that's for two reasons. First of all, what you're seeing is the contrast of the overslide accent light uh, over here. And the fact that we are on 12 volt power only right now. I don't have 110 power. So the light on that fixture right there is not able to operate. When that kicks on, it really kind of fills the rest of the space here. And it no longer feels quite so uh, dark and or uh, diminished. Speaking of dark and diminished, let me tell you about my sense of humor. <laughs> Actually, um, let's not do that. I feel like keeping my job today. Instead, let's just stay on task here. We're going to jump down here now into the kitchen and we're going to begin with the cool little like pair of swiveling bar stools i really like these and this is not the normal frankly if we're going to call a spade a spade and a duck a duck flimsy rv furniture that you typically see um that's what's really cool about these heritage glens they they spend money where it really counts you know and don't get me wrong, anytime I say a manufacturer spends money, at the end of the day, it's always the customer who truly spends money. But you get the idea of what I'm saying. They do what matters where it matters most. Pardon me. I get that out of the way just a little bit for us there. Those hidden hinges. See, take a look at that. If this door happens to jiggle around in transit a little bit, the hidden hinge wants to close itself. That's one of the, uh, the nice things about them, so you don't have to constantly fight with those things. Now, if you're really paying attention, you might realize this is effectively 
your dining in this floor plan. And that could be an instant deal breaker for some people. This does not have a traditional table and chairs. That's one of the areas this is very different from uh, something like, say, a 382 Fleur or a 3761 Montana front living. It does not have dedicated four-person, four-chair dining. It is primarily a couple's model, but it has awesome room for, like, friends and family to come over and hang out for a while. So, if you're the type of folks who eat in front of the TV or we haven't even got to the outside kitchen yet. This thing has full outside kitchen and entertainment. Wait till we get out there, guys. Um, the, I mean, there's, there's cool things in store in this video. There's a lot of really fun things that I discovered on this RV right here. Um, the, uh, big pantry over here. I love it whenever pantries are in slides. Like this kitchen slide system is the, uh, it makes the whole RV for me because they take some of the biggest features, including a larger 22 inch oven, by the way, they put them in the slide, they get them off of the floor plan, and it opens everything up to a huge degree. Now, I'm leaning over the countertop and trying to keep the camera level. Sorry if I'm making you motion sick. And notice that right there is a convection microwave oven. And, hey, how you doing? Now you're getting a, a, the reflection of me in, in night mode here as I have my handy-dandy little, you know, bald guy head warm and head sock on. Josh RV nerd, pleased to see you. <laughs> Now, it's a residential fridge in, in point of absolute fact. You know, it runs off a household power system. It's not 12 volt. It's not propane. Uh, it does have an inverter to keep it running in transit, by the way. But it, it's also a residential fridge to me in that, like, I grew up with a left-right fridge-freezer combination. And this, for whatever reason, man, it just takes me home. And and I, I just imagine the... Uh, the Anybody else ever have, you know, the, the Swans man ice cream, the Schwann's guy always bring you the, the good, like, cookie crumble ice cream bars? Every time I look at a left-right fridge like that, I instantly go back to that little memory. Which is probably much safer to discuss on camera as compared to my dark, twisted sense of humor, but neither here nor there. Uh, this is a bath and a half model. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. Um, this is one of those things that, again, some people go, uh-uh, no, no thanks. I don't want a toilet uh, in my kitchen. Okay, I respect that. I get that. This is probably not the right uh, model for you, given that. There's plenty of other really good things that might work for you that we would have here. I would just definitely encourage you to uh, give our team a call and say, okay, uh, I kind of like that one until you showed me that I had a bathroom in the kitchen. What else do you have that's like, you know, similar to that, but doesn't have that kind of problem? Also, this is the first Heritage Glen I've personally reviewed where you can reach the toilet paper holder normally from the toilet. A couple of them I've seen, you really couldn't do that. And it, it just kind of absolutely boggled my mind. Once again, those kind of simulated floating steps right there. Um, the only little hiccup I have in this area, I don't think it's that big a deal. It's, it's never tripped me up really before when I'm walking through an RV. This is a self-strutted, uh, like the stable steps are easy up, easy down. You see the strut sticks into the RV a little bit. Eh, not that big a deal. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me back up a little bit. I'm glad I spotted that wall controller there. Uh, if you are over here in the kitchen cooking up a storm, one of the uh, nicer things with this one is it does have a uh, fantastic fan up here with a wall controller. And not only that, uh, you know, it's got a little power up down button. It's just easier to operate and you see that right over here. Now, this has LCI one control. It's primarily here for the auto leveling system. One of the things over here is that we still just have like a physical switch panel for most of the stuff in the RV, including the holding tank heaters, that is the third red, well, the right-hand red switch, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, One of the cool things about, uh, I think, all the Heritage Glens is they all have that feature. Now, coming up here into the bedroom, I love me that big window right there overlooking the campsite. If you hear a funny sound at night, you can do a little security scan. Uh, again, the dual air conditioners, both centralized through the ceiling uh, and effectively located on the opposite ends of the RV to give you a very comfortable cooling experience. And let's talk about this bed. I, I like it. I really, really like what they did here. And what I like is, again, they gave us, like, this is more CPAP friendly than I see out of nearly 
any other fifth wheel out there. You've got the plugs down there. I, I, I wouldn't mind if the plugs were actually a little bit higher on the wall. I'm not going to complain, though, the fact that they actually gave us plugs and a reasonably sized side stand over here. That, I swear, is like as rare as hen's teeth. And especially in this price point, I don't see that. I usually, I just don't see that stuff. Also, just the, the visual aesthetics when you're walking up these stairs, you see that cool little like bathroom mirror accent and everything. It looks awesome up here. It just has a really cool look. Uh, I, I also want to talk about this bed here real quick. This is an Olympic queen. You ever hear one of them? Well, I'd never heard of that before until we started handling the Heritage Glens here. But what it is, is uh, 80 inches long. So it's not a short bed, but it's 66 inches wide. It's kind of be queen, uh, be queen. I mean, I'll go with it. It's be queen, a queen and a king bed. Um, and it is a, it's an uncommon, but it is a standardized size. So if you look around, like you get on Amazon or some kind of bedding company, you can find sheets and things that actually fit this. But depending on what you feel like doing, if you wanted to pull out one of those side stands, you could put a bigger, wider bed in here, and if you felt like pulling both side stands out, although you're going to sacrifice your CPAP friendliness, uh, you could put uh, probably like a, a big, massive, like extra wide king in this thing if you're so inclined. That's really hard to find a fifth wheel that does that. Now, it's partially obstructed by the big sliding privacy door here. That is back downstairs to the kitchen there. But look at above the half bath. It's a little mini loft. It's, it's an extra little pocket of storage. It's something I see Heritage Glen do all the time. They just don't let space go to waste. And here's a much better uh, look at that loft. What would you throw up here? See, for me, I feel like this is that uncommon, not going to use it every day, or like seasonal, like we were talking about, like decorations or something like that. I could see that being kind of like seasonal swap-out decorations if somebody's a, a full-timer. I could see that working pretty darn well. One little caution I'll give you on this one. Uh, I actually just noticed it. I didn't notice it before. Oh, there is one floor vent right there. Apologies. I missed that my first pass through. I called this uh, ventless flooring. I, I want to uh, amend that comment. Apologies there. Anyway, um, there's a funny little pocket kind of behind the bed storage right here where I could see little objects getting maybe kind of lost back there. Now I think you could you could poke something through and, and fish them out if you needed to, but just want to let you know that's there. And I also discovered something interesting when I was opening this up. There's an, a portable ice maker down here uh, that uh, is included with this RV. So that's something, if you wanted to use it inside, you could. If you wanted to use it outside in the camp kitchen, you could also do that too. Now, up here, straight across from the bed, you have an entertainment center, and let me give you a better look at that. There we go. Much better. When you're actually laying in the bed, this is what it's going to look like right here. And again, you can have that blackout because that's got the roller shade, just like in the living room. You could have that closed if you want to. I like, though, that they didn't box it in here because uh, it, it feels like you might run into it a little bit when you're walking in and out. Now, interesting note on this television right here. It's actually on uh, like a double swing arm, which makes it a little bit easier to get back there if you want to plug in like a fire stick or a Roku stick or something like that. Uh, expanding your entertainment on that's uh, far, far simpler that way. And thankfully, it is downward angled toward your face a little bit. And to give you a look here, we got drawer again. There's, there's some awesome dresser space in here. Um, this model, this design, again, very similar to the, the bedroom and bathroom, very similar to the North Point uh, 382 Flurb, the FLRB. And in case you're curious, if you've never seen this thing, I'll leave you a link in the video description to a couple other front living room fifth wheels to just kind of compare and contrast against. One of them also being a Montana where if you're like, I don't want a half bath uh, in my kitchen. I don't want a toilet where I eat guy. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll show you one that actually has option for a butler pantry instead of that thing there. Now, if you go with the stackable washer and dryer in here, if you choose to add one of those, you are going to have to sacrifice a little bit of that closet space. And if you do that, I, I think you can reasonably say, well, this thing feels like it has fairly limited closet capacity then. That's really going to be up to each individual person, how important that is to you and and uh, what you choose to do with that. Doing a little power crunch sit-up right here. Right across from that though, is another chunk of good dedicated bathroom storage. 
And I don't think I need to spend a whole lot of time explaining what drawers are to you people. You're not idiots by any stretch of the imagination. But one thing I want to point out here, when you open this up, it reveals another interesting hidden little gem. This RV basically has a built-in router, which is what we're looking at here. Because it's so long, if you choose to... Uh, so here's, here's the clarification. It does not have like an LTE unit built into it right now, like a, you know, exterior signal unit. This right here would basically, if you choose to add something like that, uh, rebroadcast that signal across your local site. And uh, because the RV is so long, I think they were afraid that if you added the satellite or the LTE unit in the back, it wouldn't reach all the way up to the front living room. So they gave, basically, it's just going to act like a signal repeater is uh, what she's going to do here. Now, if I back up a little bit, uh, this is like if you're sitting on the toilet, this is basically what you're going to see here, uh, straight across from that nice large shower. Uh, small little corner seat in that one. I actually wonder, is that is that big enough? You guys tell me, is that big enough to do what you got to do in there? One of the areas that is definitely big enough, though, especially with that vaulted ceiling, is the headroom. Oh, I love it so that I don't have to constantly. I'm about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, uh, by the way, it is really nice not having to duck in a shower. And again, cosmetically, I love the visual aesthetic of the double mirrors here. But something I really like. When I saw the double mirrors um, initially, I was like, ah, this is going to be one of those two sink floor plans. And I don't know. I, personally, two sinks doesn't do a whole lot for me in a camper. What I like is they didn't do that. If I climb in here in the shower to give you a better look at things, what they did is they they just, they, they added the second mirror, frankly, I think just to kind of fill the wall. I don't think it even needs to be there. I think it's nice that it's there. It makes the whole room look and feel kind of bigger. And just like the shower, there's very good room around that toilet. So if you are a bigger person, this shower, the, uh, you know, the, uh, um, uh, the bed, you know, the extra wide bed, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of really good space around this thing. I'm very happy with this bath, uh, bathroom. Uh, and again, I think part of the reason I like it is that it is a single sink bath in a, in a class that seems like a lot of these big fifth wheels keep going with double sinks and it would just be way too tight around that toilet. I tell you though, something I was really curious about and I think overall pleasantly surprised to see is the decent level of travel accessibility in here with all of these slides closed. I was really curious how that, uh, you know, little breakfast bar kind of dining situation there was going to play with and interact with the slides when they're closed. Um, now, if you're a skinny mini, uh, you could probably squeeze through there, but you're going to have to be smaller than me to do it. That being said, I don't know why for traveling you'd really need access to the upper deck. If somebody has an idea there that I'm not thinking about, let me know, but I don't know that that's necessarily a critical function. I think what is important, though, is you walk in and just bang this refrigerator's up in your face basically it is uh always going to be right there now one thing i noticed and this is why i take the time to actually you know close the slides up and show you around here in road mode and if you appreciate that make sure you hit that subscribe button we do that anytime we get the chance the slide floor it does kind of get in the way of the half bath door now I have to do a sideways travel trailer two-step, but even with my dad bod, I can still squeeze through there. I think that that may vary based on your personal physicality. I think a lot of people are going to be able to get into that, though. Now, uh, upstairs here, uh, by the way, in case you're curious, this is the way the uh, bar stools are intended to travel. So I hope you appreciate it again. Took the time to do that for you. But notice, handy little pro tip, put a pillow between them so you don't have wood-on-wood -wood crime over here. Now, theoretically, if you wanted to, you could also crawl over the master bed to get to the rear bathroom. But again, depending on your size for traveling, if you can squeeze into that half bath, you don't need to worry about that. Now, one quick housekeeping note I want to give you. You might see something else out there called a Salem uh, Hemisphere 36FL. And you're like, wow, those two things look eerily similar. They're identical. They're literally the same coach made by the same people in the same facilities with the same uh, materials. Hope you appreciate that. You know, that those extra little bits of information. That's what I want to give you here. Drives me crazy when someone comes in and says, well, I saw, like, we also are a Rockwood dealer and they make a clone product called Flagstaff. And someone says, well, I went to so-and-so's place and they said the Flagstaff uh, was better than the Rockwood. It was just a little more, you know, 
upscale upper end. And I'm like, really? How is that? Because they're exactly the same. I'm not going to use have truths and tricky words to, to, to smoke screen you. I want to give you the good information here. So little things like this. Um, like you look at this and at first glance, you're like, ooh, the outside storage on that one, it's okay, but that looks like travel trailer storage. That doesn't look like that big fifth wheel storage I want. Hang with me just a second. You're going to see how that's not a problem. And in case you're wondering what we're looking at here, that big gray box is the inverter, so you can run the uh, refrigerator when you're running down the road. Now, theoretically, uh, you can run that when you don't have shore power available, but understand, that big refrigerator uh, in conjunction with uh, the inverter will absolutely, because it's a residential fridge, it's not 12 volt, it's not propane, um, The uh, th that thing will eat batteries alive. But look at this down here. I really, I like this. Now, some people dislike having the spare tire in the front storage compartment. Um, you know, I, I could see how someone says, yeah, well, you know, it takes up cargo space. All right, I, I recognize that. But I like how it's out of the way, it's out of the weather. If I need to ever change a spare tire, I don't have to uh, go crawling around on the side of the road uh, with, you know, traffic passing me on the highway give me all kinds of red alarm anxiety i can just open my compartment i can get that um i do recognize that to get to that spare tire you might have to unhitch from the vehicle so that could certainly be a problematic point for some folks i, I recognize that for sure there's benefits and drawbacks to everything i want to give you the information well you make the choice uh all of these slides are slide awning prepped which is awful darn handy um you might notice how there's the slam latches on the baggage doors and whatnot. As we roll over here, like it's kind of interesting because the front of the RV, it's all kitchen, all living room. On the inside, it's it's action uh, packed, you know. On the outside, it's kind of flat. Like you don't see a whole lot of that on here. But as we start rolling toward the backside here, toward the actual patio, it becomes party central, man. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's let's just start checking all this out. So first of all, remember how I said, hmm, the outside storage, it kind of looks, maybe feels a little lacking. Uh, well, you have double the compartments that we first saw. There's two of those in here. We are missing uh, a, a, a light cover. I will have to make sure we get one of those thrown on here. Just kind of notice that. This RV straight in from the factory at the time of this recording. Now. I prefer outside speakers mounted uh, in the skirting of the RV, but at least this is at like neck level and they point down a little bit. So you're not blowing the uh, neighbors away, you know, with your whatever music you feel like listening to, your camping Yanni or whatever. <laughs> Yanni, where did that come from? I don't even know either. But look at this noise. Look at this thing. This is awesome. This whole thing slides out. Um, like, have you ever seen the belly of a diesel pusher where they have those big like roller trays? That's basically what this is so you have a second refrigerator outside and it's what i like about this if you look the real secret in the sauce on this one it's kind of easy to miss it's not a front drop frame fifth wheel this is a rear drop frame fifth wheel and uh also six point uh leveling on these in case you weren't uh, aware that's what the little sticker over here is telling us uh ground control to major tom we have six point uh leveling here you see the propane cooker hooker down below which obviously you're going to use on that little griddle station over there but it's kind of cool how the griddle just sort of telescopes in and out of that galvanized rolled steel compartment like how wild is this i've seen like the flurb has a cool outside cooking situation this thing is really wild though i like the drop frame in the back how it brings the camp kitchen down that is a problem i've noticed in some fifth wheels with camp kitchens the outside cooker or the sink or whatever it's like up to your face and you can't use it effectively you don't have that problem here and we have our own cool little entertainment you see it's got that nice little buckle strap to keep it from jiggle banging around in transit you can pivot that around a little bit i do believe you know what before i think you can do that i don't know that you can do that let me verify yes okay that is on a swing arm mount i didn't want to inadvertently steer you wrong on uh, one of those we will get up on that walkable roof in just a minute as we're whipping around the backside here though you see yet another uh available storage compartment and this is compliant with RV nerdism uh, number seven, the junk in the trunk storage system back here. But uh, frankly, that's a hide and seek champion spot. I mean, that's, that is not small. Now, a couple things to maybe consider. 
Um, I, I, again, I'm I'm like over the moon with this thing, but I want to be fair. The rear um, drop frame might pose a bit of a clearance issue for some people pulling into some sites and or steep driveways. And you might notice how this does not have an accessory hitch on like that back bumper kind of area. My guess is there's just so much going on back there they didn't have the opportunity to uh, add one. I could be wrong about that. That's just a theory. I haven't called the factory on that or anything. Um, that being said, the multiple storage compartments we've seen and we're not done. As Karen Carpenter said, we've only just begun. <laughs> Remember those slide out storage trays I was telling you about? Yeah, it's it's got one of those too. So it, <laughs> it's not just the camp kitchen that slides out, the storage also slides out to you, which is cool. And remember what I said about wait till you see the docking station. Like you look at it, you're like, yeah, so what? Big deal, it's a docking station. Look at where it's located in the RV. Something that has always like boggled my mind when it comes to fifth wheels. Like we love that enclosed protected docking center, but the problem is it's usually all the way up front, usual way. Yeah, um, that's a combination of usually and always. All the way up front on the RV, like 40 feet away from the park hookups, which are usual way <laughs> uh, back here at the back of the RV. This wet bay in the back area right here makes so much sense to me. And I get that a lot of floor plans can't do that. Like a rear living room with dual rear super slides, there's no room to put a wet bay back here, all of your, your docking stations and hookups. But I hope other manufacturers are taking note of this and I hope more builders find more ways to do stuff like this for us because that is so much more campsite friendly. That right there is killing it. And, and I like this. I'm very happy with this. I would be really pleased with this RV personally. If I'm gonna be picky, these doors that swing open, you might have noticed how they kind of swing open in the breeze. I would like something like a gas strut to hold them, but that's something I could pop, probably add. Ooh, something I'm trying to get better about showing you, like the front area, uh, uh, storage area under the gooseneck of the uh, fifth wheel, are the sewer outlet locations. You've got one right there in front of the tires, um, I believe basically just for the kitchen, and then you've got your bathroom black and gray back here. Unfortunately, this is a dual port kind of system so you're either going to get some kind of Y splitter or you are going to have to jump the hose over real quick. I get that it's an inconvenience. That doesn't bother me personally, but I casual camp, I, you know what sucks is I get like maybe four days of camping a year myself because I'm always here, always making videos and I love my job. I'm not complaining about that. I'm a very fortunate person. I have a very cool gig here, but um, if I lived in it full time, I could see somebody feeling uh, a little bit differently about that. Now there's not a whole lot, <laughs> BA, the, the, the section markers that we have here, standing here looking at this first thing is BA Baracus, pity the fool. Anyway, sorry, that's my little tangent my brain works on. There's, there's nothing like mega super amazing to take a look at up here necessarily, other than the fact that I like to point out, this is uh, prepped for roof solar if you want to add like a little battery tending package again with the residential refrigerator I and just the general size and layout of this I feel that this is best used in a park environment maybe not an ideal boondocking kind of rig but with the uh, the white shrouds on pretty much everything they could they maybe sacrifice just an ounce of smex appeal for a little bit of function because it's gonna allow that air conditioner to breathe a little bit easier and operate just a little bit more effectively to keep you comfy. Speaking of BA, I pity the fool don't subscribe to these videos. <laughs> and you know, it just occurred to me, <laughs> I'm sitting here, we're looking at a Forest River Wildwood Heritage Glen. I'm wearing a Montana hat and several times I've referenced things like a Jayco North Point. But that's the thing. Uh, you get to see a lot of different trailers and I, and I really appreciate the fact that I get to go through these things to, to kind of show each of them in their own light where they all kind of soar high and where they all maybe fall a little short and help give you the information on which one might be the best fit for you. Uh, what's nice is we finally have a, a nice selection of things back in stock here. So if you want to come in and be able to see some of these things side by side and actually try them on like a pair of pants in a dressing room, 
give us a call. We'd love to have you down here. Short of that, again, let me know what you think about this one. And if you appreciate all the extra effort showing you all the compartments and the road mode access and stuff like that, and coming out here when it's so cold it hurts my face, hit that subscribe button. Would really appreciate it. Leave us some comments. Let us know how we're doing and what else we can do for you. When you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.